What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened tonight on Monday Night Raw. Shout out to everyone that was part of the live stream reactions on YouTube and Twitch. We always appreciate y'all being a part of the lives. Y'all make the the Monday Night Raws and the Friday Night Smackdowns that much more entertaining. So we gotta talk about obviously the most noticeable storylines that were going on the show tonight, and we started off the show with Rhea Ripley. She had a great crowd reaction. Crowd was glad to see her back. And she came down there with a purpose, a purpose in mind to let Liv Morgan know her time is up. She essentially said, you know what, Liv, I get what you did. I understand what you did, but it's okay. Because... I'm going to make sure I take care of business. I'm going to make sure I get my revenge on you. So she essentially proposed a match with uh, Liv at uh, this year's SummerSlam, which I think a lot of us uh, kind of knew that was going to happen. So she wanted Liv to come out there, but then Dominic comes out there. Dominic comes out there. He has the one rose in his hand. And if you know anything about... The, the significance of this. I love them tying this back into Eddie Guerrero and China. If you guys remember Eddie Guerrero and China back in the day, they had their issues. And Eddie was trying to win back China's love by bringing in a whole bunch of roses. So this time, Dominic brings in one black rose. And he's trying to appeal to Rhea. Crowd's booing the hell out of him. Rhea is not giving a damn about none of it, to be honest with you. She don't even really care. She's just like, she's kind of over it. And then Liv comes onto the screen. And she's over here talking about, yeah, I had a great time in Mexico. You know, I'm, I, I don't even know how we got to this part. But she was like, you know, I kind of lost my voice. You know, but, you know, I guess... That just means, you know, I, I like to scream or whatever or something like that. And I was just like, where did that come from, Liv? Why was that information important to let everyone know that you're a screamer? Like, you like to scream. I'm like, okay. So, Liv is really ready for some Mo Monday Night Raw on Netflix. You can definitely tell. She's trying to go raw for real. But um, ultimately, she's like, you know what? I accept your challenge at SummerSlam because I'm not the same Liv Morgan. I'm not the same person that I once was before. You know, I have this championship now and I will do whatever it takes to keep it, which I like that. She, she's showing that I will do whatever it takes, whatever needs to be done to beat you. That's my only objective is to beat you. So at SummerSlam, that's fine. You on. And Dominic, you know what I'm saying? I'll see you later. You know, gave him a kiss from the screen. And at that point, Dominic, you know, and Rhea start to leave the ring. And that's when you, you know, you see how Dominic's trying to open up the middle ropes for Rhea to get through. And Rhea's just looking at him. She gets through uh, by herself. He even tries to give her the black rose and she just throws it over her head. Like, she's over it. She's done. She, she doesn't even really care. Like, she's done. So there's another part. Uh, they go backstage and Dominic's really trying to plead with her. Like the whole show, Dominic's trying to plead with Rhea and it's not working. Dominic's trying to plead with her. Like, hey, listen to me, mommy. I, like, I love you or I, I'm not. I love you, but I miss you and I'm sorry. And then she opens up uh the door, I guess, to like the Judgment Day locker room. And there's a whole bunch of black roses and vases. And he's like, look, I, I got these for you. And Rhea's just not giving a damn. She don't care. Slams the door in his face. Damien Priest comes by and he's just laughing. Because it's just one of those things where it's like, damn, man. Like, you you really you really going through it right now. You know what I'm saying? That that, that sucks. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. And then all of a sudden, there's another weird storyline going. Not even weird. It's It's funny. Jay had earlier tweeted, not tweeted, but posted on his Instagram, you know, about Rhea Ripley, you know, saying being single or whatnot. So he posted that on his Instagram. So while Damian Priest and um and Dominic talking, Jay's over here like, hey, bro, I heard Rhea singles. She, you know, I didn't know she was single like that. Like, she, I may have to holler at her or whatnot. And Damian Priest not making it any better. Like, hey, man, you may want to see what's up. 
and right in front of Dom. This was so funny, so hilarious. And Damien's like, hey, man, if that was me, I wouldn't let someone try to push up on my girl. You may want to set up a match with him to set things right. So figured that was going to happen. Damien Priest is having a great time with this. Love this. There's another segment where Damien and Rhea, they're talking to each other, like just kind of being nice and cordial to each other, which you can tell. I think they're playing some seeds with that at some point because I think those are going to be the two individuals ultimately that end up leaving Judgment Day. Um, and I, I do think that's going to start the, that's going to, the ball is going to start rolling on that particular storyline potentially during SummerSlam or after SummerSlam. So, and you see the rest of the Judgment Day just sitting there, you know, playing uh, WWE 2K in the background. So then Dominic comes in there and he's like, hey, can I talk to you? And he's just trying to plead his case to Rhea. Like, look, I, I, I really, I really care. I care about you. I'm sorry. This happened. Boom, 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 boom. And, and Rhea's like, man, that's BS. I've been hurt. I've been watching what you've been doing. You hadn't really cared about me that much. And then Dominic makes the very huge mistake saying, like, you know, you know, like, hey, but but you're mine though. Like you're mine. You know, like, like essentially saying, you're my girl. And that's when uh, everybody stopped and looked at him. And Rio was like, just walked off. Like, mm -mm, that that ain't yours. What are you talking about? I'm yours. Or whatever. And so he kind of walked off. Everyone's like, damn, bro, you you struggling right now. You can't even, can't you can't get nothing with Rhea right now. You're screwed. So we get to the match between uh, uh, Dominic versus um, Jey Uso. And I figured Liv was going to get involved because it would make sense for her to get involved. And she does. She tries to get involved in the match. And then uh, Dominic's like, yo, what are you doing out here? I don't want you out here. Like he's like on the... Um, no, he's uh standing by the ring apron. They're both talking to each other, and that's when <laughs> Jay pushes Dom once again right on top of Liv, and like he's like right on top of Liv, and Liv is loving this. So she reverses his get on top of top of Dominic and start caressing him and rubbing him, and it looked like she about to kiss him, and Dom's just like, oh no, please don't do it. <laughs> He's not even trying to fight her off him, but we understand. I get it. I get it, Dom. It's okay. The footage is real with you. And then that's when Rhea music hit and Liv, she skedaddles. She don't even wait for Rhea. She's gone. She puts the jets on and she's gone up the uh, up through the crowd, up the stairway. And Dominic's like, look, bro, look, look, Rhea, I promise you it's not what you think it is. I promise you it's, it's, it's not, that wasn't my idea. And Rhea's like, yo, focus on your match. Get in there and do what you got to do. And then as soon as Dominic gets inside the ring, he eats a spear. And uh, Jay goes to the top row, hits a splash on him for the one, two, three, boom. And once again, Rhea's just looking disappointed in him. Dominic can't catch a win to save his life. Everything's crumbling for Dominic Mysterio. We cut back to the back. He's walking. He's just, he's just distraught, confused. He doesn't know what to do. And then see Rhea in the back. So she ends up saying to Dominic, I'm nobody's, but you're mine. And then she kind of walks off with a smirk. And he feels a little bit better about that. He he feels like, oh, she said, I'm I'm hers. Sniggy here. He's like, oh, oh, sucks, Rhea. That's that's basically what I got from it. So essentially, she says, I'm nobody's, but you're mine. So I was like, okay, all right, cool. So we'll see how long that lasts. But obviously, there's going to be some more shenanigans that leading up to uh, SummerSlam. And I do think Dominic is going to be the reason why Rhea does not regain the championship she never technically lost so can't wait to see how that plays out also we got to talk about the whole drew mcintyre uh situation now this was pretty entertaining so drew was smiling just happy just you know it was it was really off-putting to see how happy he was 
get into the arena and walking down the rampway to talk to Adam Pierce and the two referee officials that got shoved at the at the media uh press table. Well, it wasn't like the press table, but the the media coverage, like the after show after Money in the Bank. You know, he Drew crashed out there, so. They were all there, and essentially, um, you know, you can kind of guess Adam Pierce was going to want him to apologize to everybody. Um, but he's out here giving high fives to the kids. He's just happy, right? So he goes out there, and Drew says, you know, you, you did what you had to do. But, you know, like, you know, I, I understand what the situation was. I get it. And this whole this whole segment was about making the match between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre a thing. And making it happen at SummerSlam. And that's what Adam Pierce was trying to do. Like, you want this match to happen. They want this match to happen. I want this match to happen. Let's do it. Crowd's chanting CM Punk. And it's crazy because Drew is out here low-key pandering. He's like, the fans want to see it. Uh, let's make this match happen. He's trying to be a good baby face. You can tell. But then Adam Pierce wanted him to apologize to the referees. And that's when Drew started to get irritated. And he was he was confused on it, on why this needs to happen. And he flat out said, no, I'm not apologizing. And then that's when he, it started to boil over. He's like, I'm not apologizing to the referees that have screwed me over. I'm not apologizing to you for, you know, you have messed me over with CM Punk. Uh, screwing me over at WrestleMania, CM Punk screwing me over in my hometown, and then at Money in the Bank, this has happened on your watch. If anything, you should be on your knees begging me for uh for forgiveness, begging me, you know, you should be apologizing to me. The fans that chant CM Punk, they should be on their knees begging me, uh, you know, for forgiveness. That's what they should be doing. And then the fact that you got Seth Rollins out here thinking he's going to skip the line and get his hands on CM Punk. That's not going to happen. And CM Punk, it didn't matter if he was going to apologize to me. I'm going to put his head on a spike. And at that point, it was up. Because Drew, you can tell it was all a facade. It was all a facade. He didn't really give a damn. He just wanted the match so he can destroy CM Punk. Didn't care about nobody else. So, of course... Adam Pierce is like, hey, you know what? Cool. Since since you don't since you don't care, I you're you're indefinitely suspended again. So boom, he got suspended again. Drew was you can tell he's like, yep, he's about to crash out. Adam Pierce threw the glasses. He um Drew ended up pushing the referees, and it, he's about to go to, go to blows with Adam Pierce. And then Seth Rollins comes out there, and they start going back and forth. Seth Rollins get the best of the exchange. Drew rolls out the ring, and Seth's like, "Bro, I want to fucking fight. You want to fight? I want to fight, bro. You got an issue? Let's run it. You let's run it." So it does seem as if Seth is now being inserted in this. Here's the thing: it's not inherently bad. But I do think it didn't need anybody else. I get why Seth would feel a way because Seth ultimately was kind of screwed out of the match at Money in the Bank because of CM Punk. So that's how he got back into this. Well, in well, when it could not even back into this, but in the mix of things. Me personally, I just don't think that's needed right now because the way it's being set up. It's being set up like all three of these guys are going to have a match at SummerSlam. And I don't, I don't even think this needs to happen. I don't. I don't think this needs to happen. I don't think this set. I think that could be a few later on. I don't know. I just feel like this Drew and CM Punk thing has been so good with just these two hating each other. The addition of Seth, I don't think is needed. I don't think it's needed. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Not saying this wasn't a bad segment. I, I definitely enjoyed it. And we know Drew and Seth have history too. I just don't think it was needed at this point. So it will be interesting to see where they go with this. Because ultimately, the match we all want to see is Drew versus CM Punk. But Seth has made it clear 
he's going to do whatever he can to take away that opportunity from Seth, from Drew even facing CM Punk because he wants to get his hands on CM Punk. And Drew's like, nah, I want to get my hands on CM Punk first. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I do think hopefully it just still ends up being Seth versus, I mean, um, Drew versus CM Punk in the end. But we'll see how it plays out. But overall, it was a solid show. I also like the stuff with um, Eric Rowan. That VHS tape was very emotional. Him talking about losing his brothers, uh, obviously, and Brody Lee and, and Bray Wyatt, um, a.k.a. Luke Harper uh, for Brody Lee. Uh, it, very emotional. That wasn't acting. That's how he really felt. And you can see how he was feeling and very powerful uh, 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 video segment. And then uh, Chad Gable and the Creed brothers packing up Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas came out there and they were beating the crap out of him. I mean, legitimately beating them up, but he was laughing every time he's he's just laughing. And they didn't understand why he kept laughing as the, he, they they were beating this guy up. And he just kept laughing. And then that's when the rest of the Wyatt, his wife, uh, brethren and sister, if you want to call it that, or the, the Wyatt family, the new Wyatt family, the Wyatt six, they come out uh, or sick. They come out and that's when Chad Gable and the Creed brothers, they say, all right, bro, it's time for us to get the fuck out of here. Because it seemed like it was going to get a uh, get a uh, get a little brutal in that ring, but they didn't want to find out. So I don't know if they're going to set up something with them for SummerSlam could be interesting. But uh, yeah, uh, that was that was a cool moment just to see them all in the ring. You know, uh, with the smoke and the effects, I definitely did like that. So we're getting some stuff progressing with that as well. But comment down below. Let me know your favorite part of Monday Night Raw tonight. Also, what are you guys looking forward to the most happening at this year's SummerSlam? Just on the Raw side of things. But appreciate all love, support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.